Good morning everyone, on behalf of Madioli Health, ECM provider of the event, I welcome you. This webinar, entitled, 50 Minutes on CCA, Multidisciplinary Approach and Open Discussion Focus on Molecular Tumor Board, is the third appointment of an ECM project consisting of three webinars. At the end of the three webinars, last the 11th of July, last the 15th of September and today, all learners will receive by email the instructions for completing the questionnaire and the relative satisfaction survey. The training credits assigned to this project are 4.5. We would like to point out that through the questions and answer section you will have the possibility to ask questions live at any time, and the possibility to put a like on those that you consider most interesting, in order to establish the priority of the answers. Thanks to all of you for your participation, to Insight Biosciences for the non-conditioning support it provided to the project, and to Professor Lorenza Rimasa for the precious scientific direction of the entire project. Professor, to you the word. Good job everyone. Hello, my name is Lorenza Rimasa, I'm Associate Professor of Medical Oncology at Humanities University and Humanitas Research Hospital in Milan, Italy. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to 50 Minutes on Cholangiocarcinoma, Multidisciplinary Approach and Open Discussion. This project includes uh, three episodes. The first one was in July, dedicated to diagnostic. The second one last week on therapeutic appropriateness. And today, that is the third and last, unfortunately, one, we will be talking about molecular tumor board. For each episode, we have two lectures, one given by an international expert and one by an Italian expert, followed by a panel discussion where the panelists will ask questions to the experts. Feel free to send your questions through the chat anytime and we will address them after the two presentations and during the panel discussion. Today, our international expert is uh, Dr. David Malka, gastrointestinal oncologist at the, the Department of Medical Oncology at the Institut Mutualiste Montsouris um, in Paris, in France. And today he will uh, discuss molecular tumor board organization, the current status in Europe and with some uh, insight about uh, the organization in France and current recommendations. Uh, afterwards, we will have uh, uh, Professor Filippo De Bro, that is a full professor of oncology at the University of Milan and the Instituto Nazionale Tumori in Milan, Italy. And uh, um, Professor De Bro will be talking about the Italian reality. So please, David, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lorenza. Um, well, uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. I will share my screen. Um, Okay, do you see it? Yes. Okay, uh, MTB. Um, in fact, uh, uh, I, I spent uh, nine, 19 years in, in Gustave Rossi uh, Institute in, uh, in, in Villejuif, which is uh, sort of the, the number one uh, corporate cancer center in France or maybe in uh, Europe. And I recently uh, and move to, to my, my new institution. And it is, it is an experience for me because I, I, I had uh, the chance of uh, having a MTB, Molecular Tumor Board, uh, uh, in Gustave Rossi, uh, formerly, on uh, uh, no formal tum Molecular Tumor Board in my new institution. We are, we are collaborating with uh, another center for that. And uh, I, I, uh, I can see uh, now the, 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 the both sides of, uh, of uh, the situation. So my disclosures. Uh, MTB, MTB is, is okay, but uh, probably MDT should be first. Uh, uh, what about the uh, cholangio carcinoma multidisciplinary team? Uh, they, there is uh, no standardized guidelines for such MDT in, uh, in BTC in general and, and in CCA, uh, but the European Network for Study of, uh, of cholangio carcinoma led uh, an online survey uh, with uh, 34 institutions 
uh, including a, a quarter of them from Italy, for the Italia. Uh, congrats to you all for your proactive uh, participation. And uh, they, they, this survey aimed to define the, the current practice of uh, MDT in colonial carcinoma. Uh, uh, if it were possible to, to, to improve uh, the, this uh, MDTs and provide the minimum standards of, of practice for uh, an ideal CC MDT. So they, they, they Summarize that in a recent uh, publication in Mesmo Open, uh, with, uh, for instance, uh, uh, recommendation on frequency, uh, recurrent pathways, type of MDT, mandatory uh, specialist and disabled uh, specialist, and uh, also uh, graded the, the current practice in, in the participating uh, centers as adequate, uh, could be improved or, or requires in, improvement. Um, so, uh, who should uh, uh, be in, in, in uh, such an MDT? Um, uh, therapeutic uh, uh, and diagnostic management of, uh, of BTC and, and colonial carcinoma uh, became uh, more and more complex in, in the recent years. And, and uh, you, you, you should now uh, have uh, all together a, a liver surgeon, a liver radiologist, a biliary endoscopist, a, a, a liver pathologist, but also medical oncologist. In case of liver predominant disease uh, uh, on liver directed therapy uh, discussion, you, you should also uh, have in board a, a radiation oncologist, an interventional radiologist, a specialist in nuclear medicine. With the advent of, target, of targeted therapies, you, you, you need uh, not only the medical oncologist, but, but um, also a molecular biologist, uh, uh, and uh, you also uh, need palliativists. So um, many people, uh, we, we should discuss uh, collectively, not only on, on, on uh, every new uh, treatment decision, but also, uh, also uh, supportive care needs uh, for the patients and patients' uh, preferences. And uh, they should also um, be involved in, uh, in diagnostic challenges. Uh, we know that uh, 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 differential diagnosis of uh, extrahepatic or intrahepatic cholangial carcinoma can be uh, sometimes uh, challenging. And I, I will focus in the next slide uh, uh, on a CUP, uh, cancer of an unknown primary, which can be uh, uh, frequently misdiagnosed, uh, 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 a cause of mi misdiagnosis for, for ICCA. Uh, for, for instance, if we look at this uh, retrospective uh, 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 study uh, from the Manchester group, the Juan Valley group, they, they retrospectively collected all cases of, of CUP in, in, in uh, four years. On uh, three years and a half, and uh, they they reviewed all the, the pathology records on uh, radio, radiological uh, uh, records, and the, the the main finding is that uh, uh, when you are uh, faced to to, to uh, 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 liver dominant or liver or liver limited uh, carcinoma of a non primary, this should probably be assessed. In a systematic way by a liver radiologist and uh, on, uh, on a specialist in, uh, in biliary uh, on hepatobiliary cancers because uh, uh, intrahepatic collagen carcinoma uh, accounts for one third of uh, this uh, liver inclusive uh, patients and uh, 11 persons, that is one patient uh, in nine of the entire group. And two thirds of these patients have uh, 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 conserved performance status and can benefit from uh, specific uh, treatments, in, including targeted therapies, because when molecular uh, profiling is performed in such presumed ICC cases, you, you often uh, find uh, uh, specific uh, molecular alterations, uh, characteristics of, of, of antihepatic uh, CCA. And it is probable that the part of the increase in uh, the incidence of ICCA in the recent years is, is due to this uh, reclassification of, uh, of, of uh, CUP cases. And in fact, in the, in the recent years, I, I saw less and less uh, uh, undiagnosed or misdiagnosed ICCA cases in uh, CUP uh, MDTs because uh, the, the awareness of uh, 
uh, of uh, medical oncologists in general and cap specialists in, in particular uh, was increasing. And in fact, uh, this, um, this uh, uh, misdiagnosis issue uh, be, be, became lower. Um, we have guidelines, and, and guidelines should be used for, for decision making in, in our MDTs uh, with a preference for, for, for national guidelines, but awareness for international ones. And in fact, in, if we go back uh, 15 years ago, uh, it was a, a real desert of, uh, of medical evidence in, in the field of BTCs with absolutely no standard of care in any setting and, and only options based on retrospective studies or, or non-randomized uh, non trials on, on, on registry uh, data. But uh, things have, have uh, substantially changed in the last decade. And I think we can all be very pleased of, of such uh, a busy slide that I will uh, discuss further. Um, in terms of guidelines, uh, uh, 2022 will be a, 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 a fruitful year because we will have, uh, as periodically, the, the, the updates of the American guidelines that's been released several months ago, but also the, the, the strongly awaited uh, update from the ESPO guidelines. I, I cannot release them uh, today because they are submitted for, for validation and, and final publication. Uh, um, uh, on, on the national guidelines exist also. I, I am coordinating the French one, which is called the TNCD, uh, Thesaurus National de Cancerologie. The last update has been released uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, what are the, the key learnings of this uh, last decade on, 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 on the on, of uh, this uh, updated guidelines. So three key, key learnings. First, we, we have standards of care at last, uh, at least for Kibo. Uh, as you see, all, all started in, in uh, 2010 with the, the, the ABCO2 uh, trial uh, on the B, uh, Japanese BT22 trial, with, which established the system as the standard of care in the first line. Then a standard in, in, in the adjuvant setting with uh, Capsitabine and uh, uh, lastly, uh, uh, standard in the second line setting with uh, Falfox after the ABCO6 uh, uh, trial in, in UK. Uh, our Japanese colleagues uh, uh, demonstrated that S1, their preferred oral uh, fluoropyamidine, could be combined to, to gemcitabine alone or even to CGEM. And to date, CGEM S1 is the only uh, chemotherapy triplet demonstrated superior to, to, to CGEM, at least in Japanese patients. We don't have yet the results of uh, the CGEM the napaclitaxel uh, trial in, in, the, in the US on the, the French Folpirinox versus CGEM uh, Amebica trial has recently failed to demonstrate the benefit of this uh, triplet chemotherapy regime. In the second line setting, the option of Naliri, 5 fu the covering uh, after the South Korean uh, randomized phase two uh, NIFTY trial. Uh, uh, as appeared as a, a, an appealing option, but the, the, the very recently released uh, results of the German Naliric trial, uh, which were um, somewhat disappointing, uh, uh, raised uh, some issues regarding the, 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 the exact place of uh, Naliric in, uh, in this setting. So uh, for chemotherapy, uh, that's it. The second Key learnings is that in addition to, to precision medicine, uh, which will be uh, the next part of my, uh, of my talk, uh, BTC may also benefit from, uh, from IO, the, the second therapeutic revolution in, in our century oncology, uh, with uh, uh, third, the, the, the demonstrations of that uh, immune checkpoint uh, blockade uh, is also beneficial in uh, MSI uh, DMMR uh, pili tract cancers, as well as other uh, uh, DMMR uh, tumors, leading to, to approval uh, by FDA on EMA. And very recently, the demonstration uh, for the first time that frontline uh, immunotherapy uh, containing uh, 
uh, treatment uh, is uh, beneficial in uh, BTC all commerce with the topaz one for all. Uh, on the, the, the uh, recent approval of uh, Biovalumab uh, in this setting by uh, the FDA, not yet by, by uh, EMA. The third and last key learning is that uh, BTC and especially uh, uh, intrahepatic conjugal carcinoma is a target rich disease that uh, warrants early molecular tumor profiling during or even before in case of clinical trial, for instance, uh, first line treatment. Um, as shown in the, the inferior part of, of my cartoon, all uh, began with uh, preclinical uh, study on, studies on IDH on FGFR2. And in uh, the last five years, by uh, uh, a constellation of, uh, of uh, targeted uh, therapies uh, 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 acting on uh, NTRAC, uh, FGFR2, BRAF, IDH1, and R2, uh, among others with approval in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, US or, or Europe. So what are the remaining questions and challenges regarding BTC management? First, uh, what will be the place in, in first line uh, from one country uh, to another for uh, immunotherapy? Uh, will we have uh, the, the, the same access to Immunotherapy, the same reimbursement from, from one country to another inside our own uh, uh, continent, that is uh, Europe. What uh, if the Keynote 966 uh, trial uh, results uh, uh, with uh, primorolizumab combined to cesium in first line are uh, disappointing? Uh, uh, this is an open question. Regarding uh, targeted therapies, will they move forward to first line? Uh, today, they are. Uh, only administered in a second line setting or, or, and beyond, and completing clinical trials in such uh, 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 small patient subsets may be challenging, as uh, illustrated by the, the, the difficulties uh, uh, experienced by uh, the three clinical trials with uh, FGFR inhibitors uh, currently uh, conducted uh, and ongoing in the first line setting in this uh, patient subset. Probably they are. Um, Competing each other on, on uh, reducing uh, accrual, which is a which is uh, a concern, uh, obviously. But uh, more generally, uh, it would be difficult to, to 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 complete rapidly such clinical trials. Regarding molecular profiling, we we, we are we are facing multiple targeted targeted alteration, and this is a, this is a, a lucky, but also multiple tests with. Uh, Immunohistochemistry, in situ hybridization, PCR, and, and RNA on DNA and GS, among others. So, how to best manage uh, samples on, on, on cost? Um, when on how to test our patients? Uh, uh, when, as soon as possible, following uh, diagnosis of, of at least advanced uh, disease, um, unless uh, within a trial, it is currently not recommended to all first-line therapy uh, waiting for results of such uh, molecular profiling. So why uh, so early in, uh, in the course uh, of the disease? First, because uh, the oncogenic drivers uh, are, are thought to occur early in cancer development and remain stable throughout the disease course, uh, at least in, in the absence of uh, pressure by uh, targeted uh, therapies. Second, because uh, uh, BTCs are, are often aggressive with short-lived response to, to chemo and high dropout rate from one, one line to another. So it would be uh, an issue to, to uh, postpone uh, uh, molecular profiling because you, you could face uh, disease progression and uh, uh, inability to, to treat patients accordingly. <clears throat> that is uh, related to, to the fact that the turnaround time of molecular profiling is not overnight. It's uh, generally uh, several weeks, from three to six weeks, if we include not only the, the, the time needed for the an analysis by itself, but also uh, uh, sample uh, uh, processing, shipping, and so on. And uh, this is a, a challenge uh, uh, for delivering precision medicine in BTC, because uh, although we have uh, targetable findings in grossly 40% uh, of, of patients. Uh, uh, testing patients is obviously 
crucial, but you need adequate tissue. Uh, and uh, in uh, recent works from uh, different groups, for instance, uh, the, the, in this publication by uh, Angela Lamarca and, and colleagues, Uh, the main challenge for, for uh, failed uh, analysis is, is the, the, the quality of the tissue samples or, or the fact that the, the, the tissue is not always available because of a cytology-based diagnosis or, or, or a, a, a failure to, to analyze uh, it. So why is this high failure rate uh, in, in, in such experiences? Uh, mainly because of a uh, uh, lack of selection of base blocks. So, Uh, working with your, your preferred pathologist is, is crucial to select the best blocks to, to, to send. And, and they, they obviously are key for, for the performance of uh, your molecular profiling. And when you have no block with sufficient tissue for analysis or, or failed analysis, you, you should consider early rebiopsy, which obviously um, increase the the the, the Length of uh, obtaining uh, results. So um, again, it is a, a plea for for, uh, for early profiling. Um, there, there are uh, um, there are current recommendations for molecular profiling, as as uh, for instance uh, uh, with this ESMO uh, guidelines for for the use of NGS uh, for, for patients with uh, advanced cancers. And these uh, recommendations are um, uh, also Uh, dedicated to, to several tumor types, including cholangiocarcinoma, with a, a list of, of uh, actionable uh, alterations, which are uh, uh, graded according to the ESMO uh, scale of uh, actionability, the, the SCAT uh, classification, with uh, uh, the, the, the one ABC uh, uh, alterations being uh, Uh, really for uh, a wide, uh, widespread use of, of uh, profiling on targeting. In this, uh, in these recommendations or, or practical considerations, uh, uh, the, the importance of RNA-based NGS is uh, is underlined for for carcinoma uh, uh, with regard to the frequency of, uh, of fusions and rearrangements that are probably better, um, better detected by uh, uh, tissue-derived RNA-based uh, NGS. Um, uh, also, considering molecular profiling, should we adopt a, 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 a systematic one-size-fits-all uh, molecular profiling uh, policy, or should we be more subtype specific? That is, should we approach differently uh, the ICCA patients uh, compared to the, to the other colonial carcinoma or galvanic carcinoma patients? The, the question of affordability uh, is, is key, and it, and it is country-specific. For instance, in, in France, you you There is no direct reimbursement for molecular profiling. And, uh, one patient cannot pay directly for, for his or her test, nor he, he or she can uh, pay for, for, for the, the, the treatment. Uh, instead, there is a, a global uh, allocation of, of money to, to the molecular platforms, which is uh, covering uh, roughly half of costs the remaining half being at charge of the, the prescribing uh, center, which is obviously an issue for, 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 for small centers with no molecular platform in-house. We have to learn to uh, understand and detect the mechanisms of uh, resistance, uh, either primary or secondary resistance to targeted therapy, as well as uh, immunotherapy. Uh, We have also to establish how to best uh, select uh, and sequence our treatment, for instance, uh, AGFR2 uh, inhibitors, um, but also immunotherapy versus targeted therapies in patients with uh, targetable alterations. And for instance, uh, 
uh, the Sapphire ABC10 uh, trial project, which will, which will be launched in the very next month, uh, which is a, a Sapphire trial after the Sapphire lung and Sapphire breast trial. Sapphire breast trial has been recently uh, published in, in, uh, in uh, Nature. Uh, so this is a Sapphire ABC 10 because it was the 10th, it could be the 10th uh, trial conducted by the UK group. Uh, so I have the, the privilege of, of coordinating this, uh, this trial in, in, in which uh, 800 uh, patients with advanced uh, BTC will start first line standard of care and will have a molecular profiling by tissue and liquid biopsy. And after uh, three months, uh, the, in case of uh, uh, disease control, patients with uh, uh, SCAT 1 to 3 uh, targetable alterations will be uh, randomized 2 to 1 to uh, matching targeted therapy, uh, that is uh, uh, LGFR2, inhibitor, IDH1, R2, BRAF, or BRCA, and PALV2 uh, inhibition versus continuation of standard of care with a possible crossover in case of disease progression. So uh, this will be conducted in France, uh, UK, Belgium, uh, Netherlands is uh, planning to, to join us, Spain and Germany will be Uh, are also keen to participate, but there are some issues in, in uh, raising uh, academic funding. Uh, everybody is welcome. Uh, if you want to join, uh, it will be a, a pleasure for us. Uh, last question, uh, real world perspective. Uh, that is, what is the exportability of uh, the, the clinical trial uh, data? For instance, uh, um, Let's have a look at this uh, uh, French uh, nationwide uh, analysis based on uh, our uh, nationwide prospective hospitalization database. Uh, uh, that is all hospitalizations uh, in uh, two years, uh, year uh, 2014 and 15. We collected uh, 3,650 ICCA cases. The median age was 73 years, 60% of patients were more than 70, uh, 24% of patients died during their first hospital stay, two thirds received only best supportive care, uh, 24% only received chemo, only 11% uh, underwent surgery, 28% uh, uh, were admitted by emergency room, 60% were managed in general non-teaching non hospitals, and 71% of patients were managed in low or intermediate volume centers, low, low volume meaning less than five patients in the two-year period, that is less than one or two patients per year. So it's obviously uh, reflecting the very decentralized Uh, pattern of uh, the healthcare system in France. This is uh, probably not the, the same figures uh, in, in uh, more centralized uh, regions or countries, but we have to keep in mind uh, such figures when we are uh, discussing uh, uh, clinical trial uh, uh, on their results. So, finally, uh, do you need a, a, a MTB? Uh, and this was further developed by Filippo uh, de Bro just after me. Um, Uh, a molecular tumor board is a, 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 a sort of multidisciplinary team, a transtumor, tumor agnostic, uh, MDT. Um, uh, they are mainly primarily de derived from uh, early drug development departments and the, the need of this department for identifying and selecting patients for molecularly driven phase, phase one trials. That is most phase one trials nowadays. Uh, with notable exception of uh, IO best trials in, uh, in all commerce. Uh, virtually all other uh, phase one trials uh, nowadays are, are selecting the patients based on uh, biomarkers or molecular biomarkers. So uh, they generally uh, involve medical oncologists from uh, each tumor specific MDT, if such MDTs uh, exist in the, in the center, plus radiologists, molecular biologists, molecular pathologists, bone formaticians, uh, etc. Um, <coughs> these centers with uh, 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 MTB uh, uh, 
often own uh, their, 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 their own molecular platform with in-house NGS panels, non-commercial panels. And they have access to, to, to molecular raw data, which obviously uh, imply that uh, you should have a molecular uh, biologists and bioinformaticians to go back to this raw data. And it is obviously completely, completely different that, that, than uh, for instance, receiving a, a user-friendly final report from a foundation medicine or, or Wardon, for instance. Uh, these NTBs are uh, uh, coordinate sampling, which is an issue, um, very time-consuming, um, needing expertise and experience, but also sample shipping, molecular profiling, uh, in-house programs, dedicated clinical trials, uh, etc. And there is a, a clear added value of uh, such uh, uh, MTBs in, in many aspects, but for instance, uh, for the organizations of co-curing actionable alterations, for specific resistance mutations after uh, a, a, a prior line of, of uh, targeted therapies and so on. So do you need an uh, MTB still? Uh, if you are in an expert high volume uh, BTC center, you have already your ideal uh, cholangio carcinoma MDT. Uh, uh, there is two main scenarios. Uh, first, there is uh, an existing MTB uh, uh, in your center. So probably your cholangio carcinoma uh, MDT medical oncologist uh, uh, should participate uh, to, to the MTB at least uh, in a remote fashion, if, if uh, possible, but she raises the issue of having uh, several uh, specialists from uh, each MDT uh, participating in, in the MTB. So, uh, for instance, in Gustav Roussi, our, uh, our option was to have a, a, a medical oncologist uh, shared between the, the two departments, the early drug development department and the, the, the department of medical oncology uh, with a, a special uh, a specialization in, in, uh, in, uh, in a specific entity. Um, if you have no formal uh, MTB in your center, uh, probably the, the the straightforward, the most straightforward uh, option would be that the molecular biologists and pathologists uh, participate to your, to, to your CCMDT, uh, at least on a case-by-case uh, case -by -case basis. If you uh, are in a low intermediate volume center with no CCMDT, uh, I would say you should refer your patients uh, uh, um, to, to regional CCMDT, at least for validating your, 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 your diagnosis and, and therapeutic uh, recommendations and help you with uh, complex issues on, uh, on the uh, mole molecular discussions. To conclude, um, the last decade has seen the emergence of standards of care in the first and second line setting, as well as in, in the adjuvant setting for, for BTCs. Uh, uh, an immunochemotherapy triplet regimen uh, that is cisgen durvalumab for, for the moment uh, may become the new first line standard of care in, uh, in our countries, depending on uh, the, the, the position of our regulatory agencies uh, at the European and national uh, uh, level. BTCs and especially uh, ICCA is a target-rich disease. Uh, so the, there is um, subsequently a plea for a systematic policy of early molecular profiling that is uh, within uh, or even before first line. The BTC are rare and heterogeneous and the complexity of the therapeutic management argue for, for referral to high volume centers with uh, an ideal uh, carcinoma MDT on ideally uh, molecular tumor board. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, David, for this uh, wonderful presentation on the molecular tumor board. And now we will move to Professor De Bro, who will uh, be presenting the Italian reality, and then we will have the panel discussion. Filippo? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm looking for, uh, for my slides. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
and uh, okay thank you very much for uh, for this opportunity uh, uh, i don't know how to move the slide okay uh, I thank also Professor Funi that supported me with some of the slides. I do not have any disclosure for this presentation. And I will start to FGFR as a model to uh, show how for a medical oncology is important to interact with a tumor molecular board. You know that there are a number of diseases that are probably treatable, uh, treated with, uh, uh, with the FGFR inhibitors and uh, with a good result up to now, at least in terms of response rate. Nevertheless, uh, it's very complex. The, sorry, I have to, okay. It's very complicated to afford the difference with heterogeneity in uh, uh, what are the possible gene addiction for tumors, even uh, like uh, a rare tumor like cholangiocarcinoma, as you can see, according to the site, according to the kind of uh, origin of the tumor, there are a number of possible genes that are uh, possible target for a treatment. Um, this is uh, just to show how works uh, the regulated FGF signaling, that instead to provide the survival and proliferation for normal cells is providing uh, aggressive, uh, progressive growth, neandrogenesis, tumor invasiveness, uh, and chemo resistance when uh, the, there is a fusion and the regulation of the transmission. Uh, nevertheless, we have to consider that uh, this kind of alteration is not one, but there is a number of possible uh, molecular alteration, even just for a gene, a single gene like for a GFR. Uh, we can have an overexpression amplification, we can have a mutation of extracellular gene, we can have a mutation of intercellular uh, TK domain, a different kind of fusion, uh, which is the reason for, for what we should think about uh, because uh, many different tumors can have many different kinds of fusion that are particular of that tumor. So this is also a matter of health for uh, different diagnosis when we are for example, dealing with the hypothesis of cancer for a non-primary or where we, do, we have to deal with the biopsy not done for the primary type kind of the tumor, looking for just simply an alteration of FGFR. <clears throat> In the first study of penigatinib, the phase one, there were a number of diseases that were enrolled. And uh, if we're looking for the activity of the drug, we noticed that the drug was active in presence of fusion and the mutation. For the old amplification, usually were not so important in terms of activity of the drug. And uh, as you can see here, which is more clear, when you're talking about fusion, the majority of patients were patients with uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Mutation include a different kinds of disease like urothelial cancer, where you're looking for amplification either of the, the, the receptor or, or the ligand, we see that there is no match in terms of activity. And now we're back to what Marka, uh, Professor Marka told us just a few minutes ago. There is a, a very wide landscape of possibility to perform analysis to, uh, to have a better knowledge of a disease, as you can see, and uh, we should also try to look and choose the proper one that is going to give us the best help. Uh, according to what were an indication of uh, OESMO, in recommendation ESMO about uh, the what kind of analysis to perform for collagen carcinoma, you can see that uh, NGS uh, with a large panel can uh, is uh, something that is recommended. And I will concentrate my talk exactly on this, on this uh, topic. What we should do, where we should do, and how large it must be a panel for an analysis. Okay, next generation sequencing, just to summarize, uh, is uh, an optimized uh, methodology to analyze at the same time multiple target not analyzing the whole genome or the whole exome, but just uh, analyzing tar uh, uh, targeted sequence 
where we know that uh, the probal, probably uh, mutation or alteration that are dealing with uh, the uh, tumor uh, grow or the tumor proliferation or the progressive disease. And uh, of course, the NGS uh, can be DNA based or RNA based, and they have different characteristics. Essentially, DNA are easier. <coughs> DNA is easier to be analyzed. It's easier to be uh, stored when we are processing the specimen. Better to understand what is with our mutation, while RNA is on our on the other point is much better to understand if there is a consequence of a mutation because it is uh, possible to quantify the uh, the outcome of a fusion and uh, uh, even the expression of a gene that can be alterated but not expressed. The, the, the problem with the DNA is that that does not give much information about the fusion transcription, while RNA-based analysis uh, is more complex to be handled because RNAs are everywhere and there is a, a number of technical issues. Plus, we have another step, which is very important for us, medical oncology to understand, also for the interventional radiology, because when we when do we perform a biopsy it is a, it is not just a matter to perform a biopsy but the process of the biopsy i mean the kind of fixation the time of fixation the the timing of the whole process and avoid the cross contamination with our specimen during the process of the specimen are very important issue so we, we, so we can, what we can do, we have to process FGFR, so why we should analyze, or we have to process just a single gene like a GFR for, or BRAF, we are talking, if we are talking for uh, cholangiocarcinoma, if we are just uh, to analyze, if we have just to analyze a single gene, probably the single gene analysis is uh, uh, less costly and quicker than to perform an NGS analysis. Not necessarily quicker, but uh, it costs about 25 years less, at least in Italy. But as soon that we move with the number of genes that we want to analyze, NGS analysis is much, much better than a single gene. And a larger panel, if we have more than two or three genes to analyze, is definitely more convenient than a small panel. This is uh, very clear from this uh, experience that we just done. So when in our institute we started to do few years ago, and at the beginning we started with uh, a, an analysis on DNA and GS done on DNA, on an archer testing for fusion, which was considered the best uh, uh, system, the best, the best, the best technical issue to analyze uh, uh, fusion plus uh, the PDL evaluation, of course, and uh, a, a smaller uh, panel for the liquid biopsy. Nowadays, we are finished to consider an OCA plus panel, which is a mixed panel of uh, RNA and DNA uh, analysis, which is with more of a 50, 500 genes to be analyzed. Uh, in parallel with the PDL1 analysis, we still uh, a, a smaller panel for uh, for a liquid biopsy. Plus, uh, we have uh, to perform all the study on germline uh, eventually uh, genes to understand if there is some kind of uh, familiarity and dependence, uh, of course, uh, in healthy population. And for research. Uh, we uh, set up also uh, RNA single cell analysis, uh, which is very helpful if we have to study, uh, for example, residual uh, population, tumor population after a treatment to understand the, the heterogeneity of the population and uh, how to improve the treatment. I'm talking about this because I think that it's very important to consider that an analysis can be done either to perform just a diagnosis and assess if there is a possibility of precision medicine treatment with a target therapy, just is for the standard of care. And this is a 
an aspect. The other aspect is that more information we get from our analysis, more information we have to perform improvement and research about, uh, for example, a rare disease like cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, the mission of a molecular tumor board, as a matter of fact, is not only uh, 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 to be a tool for the governments of precision, or precision oncology, but it's one of the mission of our, of course, but is also to provide uh, uh, a pool of information and a pool of opinions how to uh, prescribe uh, test and treatments. Uh, there is a due that is uh, how to uh, accept innovation in technology, which is very, uh, very quick at this time. So how to upgrade our uh, technology to provide the best test for the patient and uh, taking in consideration that the learning curve of whatever uh, happened new sometimes is lower than the <laughs> improvement of, te of technology. Plus, uh, it's very important the tumor molecular board because provide the collection information that are not only molecular, but also clinical pathological and data and clinical data to try to give an outcome over the time to, to the data that we collect. The two molecular board hour, for example, is composed by two heads that are uh, me as a chief of department of medical oncology and hematology, but the other one, of course, and the leading maybe is uh, Professor Giancarlo Puri, which is the, 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 the chief of an uh, ANAPAT department, plus a coordinator that is a biologist, a molecular biologist. You can see that the number of oncology present is high. Uh, there are uh, molecular biologists, there are molecular pathologists, genetists, uh, bioinformaticians that are implemented because uh, there are a lot of information that we can get in silico for what we get and the pharmacist, plus uh, all uh, the uh, doctors that are coming from the multidisciplinary uh, groups. Uh, treatment groups that are those that are presenting the case and asking for the opinion of the tumor molecular board. So the goal is uh, to, to be a source of integrating, uh, integrating genomic and clinical data, uh, to be defined the tumor molecular board in Italy we, uh, we have been deliberated by the, our uh, the general director of the institution, but there are deliberations for molecular tumor board in any county in Italy now with uh, similar approaches. So Italy has, a wide, because it has a, a county related medicine in terms of, of reimbursement, has the problem that the deliberation can be sometimes uh, different from the country to the other which is, uh, of course, uh, a problem. It is very different from the centralized approach that I admire a lot in France, but uh, may allow even a small center to have uh, at least a regional uh, molecular tumor board that uh, has to support the doctor for the, the clinical decision. The report, as a matter of fact, is very important. And this is a, another dynamic approach because we are discussing about how to report the data every time that we, we have a discussion, every, every uh, Thursday afternoon, like now, when we have we discuss about 50 cases, between 20 and 50 cases for the molecular tumor board, we decide to uh, discuss only the most important controversial case and not those where we have a clear uh, evidence of a relationship between the molecular alteration or no molecular alteration in a clinical outcome, but how to report the data for the patient is a very important issue, very delicate, because interpretation is important. Uh, we analyze uh, more than uh, nearly 1,200 patients uh, for nearly uh, 1,400 tests in the 2020. You can see the difference in the distribution of the disease. There were about uh, uh, Five, uh, four or five percent of cases were uh, colangio, majority were lung cancer and colorectal, as of, of course. And you can see that up to now, in the time, we were using many different kinds of panels 
what else? There was on combine, there was a Archer for Track Foundation, a hotspot for the single disease. What we observe, we observe that the most frequent alteration was a mutation of P53, of course. Second one, a mutation of Kairas, then the CDK N2A, N2A, and you can see all the other differences, which is very important because through the information we can get from the molecular tumor board, we can design a score like this. This is a a, a cartoon showing that, for example, this is the, the light brown color is the number of cases that have alteration for KRAS, P10, PI3K, and the, 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 the green are the actionable. So those alteration where we have drug to propose to the patient and the dark brown and the red are the cases where we were able to treat the patient with uh, an action with a uh, with the target drug, and this is a very very dynamic of, of course uh, cartoon because nowadays the information are much better and the number of patient treated are high is higher, and this is uh, also another important consideration to be done about the use of a large panel, uh, probably uh, in a, in a hub center which is what we recommend now. So to create uh, where is, whenever is possible, a hub center that are using a large panel of analysis, because as you can see, a smaller panel for diseases like lung cancer, where the, the actionable genes are very well defined, uh, do not provide much difference as, as compared with a large panel. But if we go in more difficult disease like uh, cholangio, like pancreatic cancer, like uh, gastric cancer, Using a large panel, we can reach up for, for up to 40% of the patient analyze the possibility of, have, uh, of having an opportunity of treatment with target agent, either in uh, uh, label, the minority, but also uh, clinical trial or off label, if there is opportunity to treat the patient off label, uh, according to the, or the situation. And, uh, and this is very important because uh, sometimes when we're talking about cost of uh, uh, NGS analysis of uh, molecular analysis, who is contrary says that uh, there is a, a, a waste of energy or a waste of time and money because we are looking for targets that are expressed in less than 5%, less than 3% of, uh, of the patient analyzed. But that is, is true for a single gene. If we analyze a large panel, we probably will found two important things. One, we probably will found more genes uh, alterated. We, we, we could have uh, the, uh, the idea of what is the tumor uh, molecular burden, which is sometimes useful for, for example, immunotherapy. We can understand better if there is no response to our target uh, if there are other genes that can uh, uh, contrast the activity of the, our, our target agent. And plus we can have more data for clinical research. So I would say that tumor record board is important uh, even to provide information to the uh, society to improve the clinical research. Plus, as you can see, there are by definition Different in terms of cost between a not spot of 50 genes compared to Temo Fisher with a double uh, possibility to analyze RNA and DNA. But with this kind of spot, we're losing, for example, the fusion. With this kind of analysis, we are moving now from Oncomine to an Illumina platform, for example, which is a considered less, better, better performer. And uh, you can see that uh, actually. <clears throat> the costs are not really different, even if they are much higher than a small hot spot, hot spot that can be suggested for small center if they would have a quick analysis, but do not provide enough information, in my point of view, for the effort. And the, the terms of uh, response is uh, about five days. Actually, in Italy, we have uh, in two weeks 
uh, the, the, the answer of uh, a large panel nowadays. Plus, uh, the last but not the least is the future, because uh, for many uh, clinical situations where it's not possible to perform uh, an analysis because they have just a cytological uh, diagnosis or uh, not, not enough tissue or too much necrosis or whatever, uh, an alternative to, to, the, to the biopsy, the liquid biopsy can be very useful. And in this case, a liquid biopsy uh, can provide the information, but uh, there is a difficulties on the technical point of view is an issue because of course the sensitivity of the test must be much higher than uh, uh, what we perform on the, the tumor samples. Then on this, uh, for also for this reason, I recommend that uh, we, we should try to centralize uh, our effort uh, to provide uh, the more accurate information for the patient. And with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Filippo, for this uh, great presentation about the Italian reality in the uh, molecular tumor board at the National Cancer Institute in Milan. Uh, we are running a bit late, but we will um, keep the 20 minutes for the discussion. We have uh, six panelists. I think we have uh, plenty of questions from the panelists. And the first one is uh, Erika Martinelli. See, yes, thank you very much, uh, Lorenza, for the kind invitation. And thank you very much, uh, Professor Marika and uh, Professor De Bro for the excellent talk. I am, uh, as you stressed, uh, the importance of uh, the molecular tumor board and as uh, Dr. Professor Malka said, uh, the MDT come first. Uh, mm, come first, uh, um, and, and so I'm wondering uh, how, uh, which is the best strategy in order to lose, to avoid the patient uh, in the discussion on the, in the molecular tumor board, especially in the peripheral center, you know, which are their strategy. And another question is about how we can improve the interaction between the molecular tumor board and the MTD. Uh, yeah. Not, not a simple, uh, not a simple problem. Um, I, I, I emphasize that MDT should come first because um, uh, even for patients that are uh, not uh, candidates for discussion of uh, of targeted therapies, all the other aspects of BTC management can be significantly e e impacted by by uh, uh, the, the level of expertise, obviously surgery, but also uh, palliative care, diagnostic issues, and so on. So uh, one of the uh, recommendations of, uh, of, the, of the ENSCCA survey is that if you are not able to, to have you, your own uh, uh, CCA MDT or hepatobiliary uh, MDT, you probably should um, affiliate uh, and connect with a, a reference MDT in, in your neighborhood, in, in your region, uh, for uh, discussing uh, the, the, the most important uh, diagnostic and therapeutic issues for, 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 for your, your cases. And uh, probably it is the, the, the most straight, straightforward way of also connecting to uh, to uh, an MTB if uh, such MTB uh, is uh, is uh, already working with this uh, reference uh, MTB. Uh, obviously, the the, the 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 situation can can be very different from one center to another. For instance, in, in comprehensive cancer centers, you, you may have a very specialized uh, 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 medical oncologist on on the tumor specific uh, uh, medical oncologists on the very well established uh, uh, on experience uh, MTBs, but no liver surgeons or, or, or uh, uh, dedicated uh, pathologists or, or, or radiologists. So uh, I think ideally you should have both. Uh, uh, on, for instance, in, uh, in Gustav Roussy, uh, where I spent uh, 19 years, we, we don't have liver transplantation, we don't have hepatologists, but we have uh, a, a large uh, gastrointestinal unit and a huge uh, MTB. 
uh, on the, 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 the approach we, we, we chose was to, to hire uh, a medical oncologist with uh, uh, gastro, gastrointestinal training by, uh, by, by, by formation and, and to, to, to place it at the interface of uh, the, the early drug development department and the, the GI oncology unit. And uh, you, you probably know him, it's, it is Antoine Holbeck, who is uh, half time uh, in the, the, the phase one unit and MTB uh, uh, and half time in the, the GI oncology unit. So you should create an interface either physically in, in house in, in your own center or by connections with referring centers for the molecular part or the, the, the CCA part. Thank you very much. Connection is always the key. Thank you. Always. <laughs> Obviously, Erika. Thank you, David. I think the second question is from Stefano Tamberi and it's probably for uh, Filippo. Oh, thank you very much for uh, the invitation, Lorenza, and thank you for uh, the, this the very interesting discussion. I have a question from Professor Debro because uh, well, uh, I, you show how the, there are a lot of, of NGS sequencing platform from the companies, from Foundation Medicine to Ninaus uh, platform. So, uh, and this very complex uh, uh, analysis for the FGFR gene. So what do you think uh, the, there is a, a platform better than the other or uh, uh, we have to go to the large panel as you go, as you work in, uh, as you as you made in your institute, which is the best, or in the in the in the large country as a, as a uh, where we we work. So. <laughs> okay, well, I, I show the reality because we are talking about reality. So, um, as a tumor molecular board, we analyze uh, uh, cases that are coming for, for example, uh, patients that have been screened for studies. In this case, uh, many companies are using Oncomine or uh, Foundation, as well cases that have been uh, studied from our in-house uh, system, which is uh, uh, our Noca Plus with Oncomine, we are moving on the, on the Lumina panel. So the tumor molecular board nowadays uh, has to provide the information about the data, where the data came from. And uh, because the reality is that patients sometimes perform their own test, they have um, advised to perform a test in Germany instead of France or a foundation. We do not repeat that case, but we analyze it according to what we know about the, the methodology that's being used, we analyze the information that we have. Of course, in the future, we will have uh, always to, uh, uh, to perform two uh, to, uh, way because for the patient that have been studied in clinical trials, screen for clinical trials, the, 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 the test is going to be the test that the company is providing for the analysis. Uh, but as in-house testing, what I strongly suggest is to have a larger panel and probably a centralized analysis like they are doing in France now, you know, with a larger panel, mix RNA and DNA because the DNA is not providing enough information for arrangement and fusion and uh, uh, DNA and uh, RNA is not providing enough information for mutation. Plus we have all the amplification. So it's a complex, I try to show you the complexity of the system. So this is the reason for what probably we should centralize, centralize the analysis when it's possible. Uh, Thank you. David, would you like to add something? It, 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 just a, a, a very, very small comment. Uh, um, often the, the commercially available uh, uh, tests are very stringent in, uh, in, with regards to, to cellularity uh, of your tumor samples. And they, they decide to not providing uh, analysis because they are, they, they are uh, on a clinical grade uh, use and, 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 and they have to provide reliable results. So it can uh, result in a, in a significant uh, per percentage of no analysis cases in your, in your patient file, uh, up to 20%, for instance. Whereas uh, in-house non-commercial uh, programs often 
always try to do something, even if cellularity is lower than 20%, for instance, or even 10%. So, so uh, it is difficult to compare uh, this uh, level of risk and uh, resulting results uh, between, uh, between uh, different solutions. And you have to, to, to have this in mind when, when you, you are using a, a commercial versus a, an, an in-house proprietary uh, uh, solution, if you, if you agree with that, Filippo. You, you are, you well, I completely agree. Lost. We have a, with foundation, we have a 30% failing, 30% because of necrosis or whatever. And for those patients, usually we reproduce some data on a smaller hotspot, but because of, in this case, we perform maybe an hotspot analysis for few genes uh, according to the disease uh, that the patient uh, has. So in this case, uh, it's, it's easier, but not always. So. Uh, you're right. Uh, there is also the problem of validation. I don't mm -hmm. know how many tests are validated. Even foundation is, <laughs> is not validated yet, apparently. So the problem is that, that the technology is moving so fast that uh, we do not have enough time. So we have to, to try to interpret the data. So the, this is also the reason for what I, I, I would prefer to have in-house uh, large uh, uh, panel of analysis. But uh, of course, uh, for, for research center, we have to accept that, that the companies, if we, they want to go with foundation or with other uh, commercial available tests, uh, those patients, they will not repeat a biopsy. Uh, it's not correct to ask for a repeat biopsy. We do sometimes. We do sometimes. Actually, we do always at progression of disease, always. In patient that they want uh, to ask a second, when there are when there are a clear satisfactory second line treatment, we usually provide a second a second biopsy sometime to understand if there is a changement in the molecular profile, especially for genes related to angiogenesis and so on. Uh, thank you both. We can now move on to the following question, Francesco. Thank you again for the invitation and many compliments for the speakers. Uh, I have uh, one question about uh, the turnaround time. In your presentation, uh, David, you said that uh, the time, uh, the turnaround time is in the range of three, six weeks. In my opinion, six weeks is a long time for, uh, <laughs> for a disease uh, with a short uh, life expectancy. What do you consider uh, uh, op an optimal uh, turnaround time? Uh, how could we reduce this time? Uh, uh, Francesco, I, I fully agree with you. Uh, with a median OS of uh, less uh, than one year in uh, most uh, non colorectal uh, advanced uh, GI cancers, for instance, uh, it's, it's obviously uh, unacceptable. Uh, I, I, I would uh, stress that uh, there is a, a, an ideal uh, turnaround time, that is, uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, underlined on, on release by uh, uh, the, 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 the firms that are commercializing uh, uh, such, uh, such uh, uh, protocols. But in the real world setting, it is not always the case. Uh, for instance, if you uh, have a systematic policy of uh, molecular profiling, probably you are in a large center, a comprehensive cancer center, an university hospital and so on. So probably you are a, a tertiary care center or quaternary care center. So many of your uh, tumor samples are outside your institution, for instance, because the patients have, have been uh, uh, biopsied or, or, or operated on in other centers. So you have to take into account the time needed to uh, to collect uh, these samples from from outside. And in practice, if you look at the, the the actual time spent from the prescription by the oncologist to the release of the final results, it it always it often take more than two weeks. On 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 sometimes three, four, five, six weeks. And imagine uh, the the problem if uh, you receive a uh, sample not analyzable for cellularity. Uh, you have to do it again. 
or to re, uh, go back to the blocks with your pathologist, resend the, the block, uh, or perform a, a, a re-biopsy. So that is uh, another argument for a, a very early uh, policy of molecular profiling in such an aggressive uh, disease as BTC. You have to to anticipate such uh, such issues in 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 uh, terms of turnaround time. Obviously, uh, the 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 strict turnaround time for the molecular analysis by itself is uh, 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 four days. Yeah. Um, uh, but it doesn't take into account all the steps needed to to have it. Yeah, I think if I can make a comment, I think I show you in the one of the, my last slide what is the technical time, the technical time from the specimen to the answer of the molecular analysis is no more than five days. But then if you have a, to interpret the data, the shipping, the meeting of the tumor molecular board, the interpretation, you know, it's like a, the CT scan you perform in a few minutes and sometimes you have the answer after three days. <laughs> that is not the matter of the, <laughs> the technology. Now, there is a, how many people are involved in the process. You cannot perform a molecular tumor board every day. So for example, we do once a week and see if the case is complicated, you want a further analysis, you lose another week and so on. So there is a matter, but I would say that two weeks should be a proper time to have an answer. It's possible if we, if, but must be done for 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 uh, structure that are institutions that are dedicated for this. No. Foundation takes four weeks sometimes, and sometimes takes three weeks mm -hmm. to tell you that there is no cellularity for the for the, for the analysis. Foundation. Really true. Um, Lisa, would you like to ask uh, your question? Yes, uh, thank you, Lorenza, and thank you to the presenters for uh, your excellent presentations. Um, a question for Dr. Malka. Uh, we have seen the uh, experience of Istituto Nazionale Tumori and the point of view of Professor De Bro about uh, liquid biopsy. Well, I'd like to know your opinion about the role of liquid biopsy in the evaluation of molecular alteration and uh, do you think that it should be implemented and how can it be implemented? Well, it's, it's, it's an odd, odd topic. Um, <laughs> in fact, there, are, there have been, uh, it is in online, uh, available online in Annals of Oncology, uh, the, the experience uh, with Guardian uh, liquid biopsy on more than uh, 1600 uh, cancer cases, uh, which show um, uh, roughly that uh, liquid biopsy is in fact good for uh, point mutations and, uh, and with uh, more than 80% uh, concordance rate with uh, paired tissue uh, samples, but with a very low uh, concordance rate for fusions especially FGFR2 fusions uh, with a 18% uh, concordance rate only, if I remember well. Uh, this is in contrast with uh, other experiences. For instance, uh, uh, one paper which is uh, in press also in Annals of Oncology, uh, not published yet from uh, uh, my previous institution, Gustav Roussi, uh, which showed that, in fact, liquid biopsies are, are quite good and are performing well. Including for fusions, including for fusions, uh, um, and uh, they can even be uh, more sensitive than tissue, probably because of uh, some tissue sample quality, uh, uh, maybe different times of uh, sampling also, uh, on because of intrin intrinsic tumor heterogeneity. Um, uh, and uh, uh, with a, a clear advantage among others uh, in terms of uh, turnaround time. Uh, if I remember well, 12 days instead of uh, uh, 46. Uh, I'm not sure of the, 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 the last figure, but a two to threefold uh, uh, higher turnaround time for tissue versus liquid. Um, 
other advantages that, that you, you already are aware, of course, uh, in terms of uh, repeated uh, liquid biopsies with monitoring of, uh, of, uh, of uh, mutations on, on uh, resistance mutations in patients uh, treated by, by, uh, by uh, specific uh, targeted therapies, uh, which is uh, clearly an advantage because even if the acceptability of uh, rebiopsy is quite high in, uh, in uh, patients with hard to treat cancer, at least in, uh, in expert centers, they are, they are very keen to have uh, rebiopsy. It is, it is always uh, with uh, 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 minimal risk, but uh, uh, substantial risk. Uh, and, uh, it is not always possible to do it, especially in uh, Il define uh, uh, collagen carcinoma uh, as uh, sometimes with uh, very large collagen carcinoma, for instance. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we move on to Sara. Hi, thank you for uh, the opportunity to share with you some uh, comments and questions. Uh, I have one short question that uh, might seem easy, but I think that in the our clinical reality is not. Um, and um, it is, uh, uh, as long as uh, uh, dragable alteration will increase a long time, we have to suppose that uh, uh, drug will not be registered all with an agnostic indications. And so we will have uh, in future to, to face uh, uh, regulatory constraints uh, to the prescription of targeted drug. Uh, and so my question uh, is how to manage uh, uh, wh when we find an alteration uh, potentially draggable, but we do not have the availability of the drug uh, already registered, how do you face uh, uh, the access to the, to the drug uh, and also the payment for the cost in France? And uh, to Professor Debro, uh, how they manage uh, this situation at the Instituto Nazionale Tumori. Thank you. Uh, so for friends, uh, we have uh, the, the same issues on the same heartbreaking uh, situations in, in, in this case. For instance, last week, I have a patient with a uh, uh, 31 year old patient with uh, n Allora, and, mercoledì. And uh, absolutely no uh, availability for N-TRAC inhibitor because they are not reimbursed in France for adult patients, only for children. And uh, we ask to the, to, the, to the farmers if they can uh, provide on a compassionate basis uh, on, on their N-TRAC uh, inhibitor and they refuse because they, they are not allowed to do that. Uh, so it is a, it is a shame. Uh, and th that is why we completely changed our mind when uh, redacting the, the, the last update of uh, our national guidelines for, for BTC. Uh, um, formerly, we, we, we had the policy that, okay, let's see what it is uh, allowed on uh, uh, agreed and reimbursed, and then we can make some uh, medical and scientific recommendation based on that, those limitations. Uh, we decided to change completely the mental burden. Well, so we decided uh, very proactively to say, okay, what is medical uh, science and medical evidence? Um, it is up to you, uh, our stakeholders, our regulatory agencies, to change the things, to put it in accordance with uh, medical science, not the, not the reverse. And the, the, the situation is quite changing uh, nowadays in France because we recently, uh, we have been recently informed that uh, in case uh, where uh, you cannot prescribe a drug, uh, a targeted drug, because it is not reimbursed in, in France, uh, you can uh, still have it uh, if you um, say that in your molecular tumor board or your MDT that uh, this target drug, targeted drug is appropriate for your patient based on 
medical evidence and you have to list it. Um, it will be uh, uh, available by your uh, pharmacy uh, with uh, uh, a label which is uh, off standard and you will be reimbursed for that and not uh, at the charge of the institution as before. So it is, uh, it, it, it is paving the way for uh, off-label uh, uh, evidence-based uh, prescriptions of drugs not reimbursed if you have a sufficient level of evidence for that. So things are changing in France uh, regarding that. But uh, it is still not possible, uh, for instance, in France, to prescribe uh, an immune checkpoint blocker for a, a non-colorectal MSI DMMR tumor. So uh, you see the situation is very contrasted. Well, in Italy, we are in a similar situation. We have uh, the possibility to ask, as you know, uh, to ask a, a, a drug agency to apply for some uh, founding uh, for off-label prescription of, of drug that have some kind of evidence, for example. Um, but sometimes this funding is, is finished, so uh, the drug agency does not support it. What I mean is that, of course, there is the need. You said we need an evidence, and probably in the next future, even um, from the study, the Rome study, and some political issue that we are pressing to have uh, at least the possibility to propose for patient with a target, a target agent, or even if there is always some, um, um, you know, concerning about the fact that uh, the weak evidence uh, is enough to support the high cost of such kind of drugs. This is one of the problems. But uh, in Italy, we have the possibility to ask to the government to reimburse now at least the example of MSI tumors, not colorectal, is the same also for our, in our country. And uh, for all the other indication, for example, uh, if we do not have trials or if we do not have expanded access from the company, sometimes we have to deny the indication to the patient, but we are allowed to prescribe uh, if the patient is going to pay his own treatment, which is, uh, is a matter of a relation with the insurance if you have some evidence at least of phase two or an expanded access. Those are, this is the situation in Italy. Uh, our, our, our fighting now is exactly this, to have uh, at least indication approved under, under uh, the circumstances and uh, a, a, a subjudicial approval of drug that has a target uh, uh, to select the patient population, because if there is a target, appropriateness should be considered part of the part of the business, even if you have a comp not comparison with the standard of care. But many, very often, there is no standard of care, as you know, for patient when you are asking this indication. We are more lucky with track because it's been approved for agnostic indication at least in Italy. Thank you both. And Rosanna, we have one more question. Okay, thanks. Congratulations to you, Lorenza, for this cycle of interesting meetings. And many congratulations to Professor De Bru and to Professor Malka for their really outstanding presentations. My comment and question focuses on the need and the opportunity to foresee a network of molecular tumor board in each country, in particular in Italy, but more in general in each country with common guidelines. Uh, this in order to guarantee an homogeneous path for our patients and equity in terms of access to the molecular tumor board and more in general to the profiling, uh, molecular profiling in all the regions. This avoiding disparities uh, which may arise from the different opportunity, opportunities. Uh, and uh, therefore, I wonder whether you believe it would be important to realize a molecular tumor board network for these reasons, but also to implement uh, shared research projects uh, and implementation of knowledge. Well, we must, be, uh, we must agree with you, at least. Uh, but if you follow the Italian law, and the deliberation about tumor molecular board, 
I read uh, 11 derivations from different 11 different counties, and they are not similar. <laughs> so, so this is a, an important issue. So definitely, definitely is the correct issue. We should work all with the same approach of networking together to provide it, even the real data information, which is uh, sometimes missing. We are working easier with Europe. In Cancer Core Europe, we're doing the same thing with Gustav Roussy and Heidelberg and so on, in a much easier way. I fully agree that such initiatives, as, as Filippo said, uh, Cancer Core Europe, we've uh, selected the network of uh, large cancer cancer centers, is already a, a step uh, in, in this way. Uh, probably there, there will be uh, many issues, uh, for instance, uh, sharing. Uh, uh, fully annotated uh, clinical on genomic data throughout different countries uh, can uh, raise some uh, concerns uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, uh, an anonymity and so on. Uh, there is an opportunity for for big data analysis and maybe. Uh, uh, leveraging the the, the 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 knowledge and the analysis to 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 an unprecedented uh, level of, of 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 knowledge, maybe we could see some things in uh, in uh, uh, such a huge amount of uh, of uh, bioinformatic data uh, uh, when we are uh, facing uh, twenty five thousand uh, uh, samples instead of one thousand. Artificial intelligence could be uh, incredibly uh, uh, yeah. exciting in this, uh, in, this, uh, okay. in this setting. So I fully agree with you, Rosanna. Let's do it. Yeah. Thank you, Ola. I think we have to close. We are just at 30 minutes late, but I think it was definitely worth it. Uh, I would like to thank David and uh, Filippo for the outstanding presentation. I would like to thank the discuss center, uh, the panelists for the amazing discussion and uh, all the panelists, uh, all the panelists and all the attendees uh, for listening. So thank you all and uh, have a great evening. Bye Ciao bye. To, bye bye to everybody. Bye bye. 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 Thank bye. Thank you very bye. much. Bye.